Hi, it's Tom here from FDS, and today we're going to be having a look at the hammer shot again. Um, and I've got a nice Gavin Fuzzy 8-shot cylinder here to go in this one. And uh, thank you very much to Gavin for getting this out for me so quickly. So we're going to have a look at this kit, how to fit it. First of all, before we get started, we've got to say a big shout out to Andrew Aitchison of H Attachments, who produced the very first 8-shot cylinder. Gavin freely acknowledges that his is inspired by um, Andrew's original and Gavin assures me that this one is better. So we'll only see in a minute whether or not that's the case. So we've got the eight-shot cylinder, and then you've also got uh, these two parts. You've got the rather neat little printed indexer there. You can see that uh, that allows the uh, hammer, sorry, that allows the uh, hammer shot to rotate, just like it should do stock. Very neatly printed, fits into the back of the cylinder like that. So we'll see how all that goes together. We'll get the hammer shot open. I'm also going to look at a little trigger mod today. I'm going to show you how to alter the trigger pressure of your hammer shot. And this is a common thing that people um, have problems with, especially with the blaster parts metal kit. People say, oh, it doesn't catch. Now, the issue is to do here with the hammer and the sear. The way the hammer is designed, um, it doesn't fully engage with the sear on the blaster parts kit because the blaster parts kit is slightly out of dimensions where it's cast. And what we can do is we can alter the movement of this part of the mechanism, which is the sear, and how it engages into the hammer. So what we can do is we can allow it to move a little further forward here at the front um, and that just gives you a slightly better positive engagement with the hammer. So if you've got one of those Blaster Arts kits, this is a recommended mod. I'm doing it, this is this one, to give me a slightly higher trigger pressure. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I've got a little thing here. Yeah, I've got a spacer, so I want to see what sort of size that is. So I've got a 9mm spacer to go in this one. Well, 9.69. I'm not going to quibble about a little bit. I just randomly cut that with some pipe cutters this morning. And uh, I'm not going for a massively big spacer in this one. And um, this is one of my side arms. And by the time I'm drawing those, I'm generally not going to be worrying too much about how close or far away people are. We've got a look at this. Actually, I'm not sure whether that might not be a spacer. It feels a bit tight for being a spacer. I don't know what that part does, but I guess we'll find out in a minute. So we've got the uh, rotation pin here. Now, I don't know how that's going to go with the new cylinder. I'm guessing that I'm going to take the old one out. So I think this new cylinder obviously just takes this end of the pivot like that and pivots around that little plastic part there. I think probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my drill out in a minute and uh, I'll drill out a little bit. I won't drill all the way through for the pin, um, but I'll drill down a little way here and then I can cut this pin here and then I can use that pin through into the cylinder and that will give me a slightly stiffer fit. I'm not going to need this pin again because I've got to spare one of these and to be honest this hammer shot's never going to be stock again so that's a worthwhile thing to consider. I have no idea what this is. I'm sure we'll find out as we go and I'm sure there's a perfectly good reason behind it but I can't quite see what that's for and you can see the indexer fits in there like that. Now the first thing to think about with this cylinder is the dart fit. So I've got a couche here, there's a, red, there's a yellow couche and uh, here's a uh, honeycomb or x tip waffle Here's a, a standard kind of ACC type. Blue Kush. These are slightly used, but not a lot. And Glow X tip. And here's a, like an elite style Vobri. And you can see that these are by no means, I didn't have to twist those in. That's the newest dart of the batch that literally has been fired once. So if I see no twisting required, and that has gone right down to the base. And you can see on this couche again, couche foam's nice and fat again. No twisting, really good dart fit. So I've got to applaud Gavin for that because I know how tricky that is to do with these cylinders. The walls are extremely thin. So just be aware of that, that you don't want to be banging the faces of it. That's one of the reasons why this molding is, is added to the surface detail there, I suspect, is to try and support this thin section right over the top of each one. So there's no way you're going to be able to brass that. Um, but I think getting an 8 that fits that nicely is an achievement in itself. First thing we can move on to before we get carried away with the other parts of this mod is to quickly investigate this trigger fix. So what you need to do that is you need a sharp knife and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take this section here, let's just get it visible to the camera, this little piece here by the end of the blade, you just need to shave a little bit off that. So just a little bit with your knife. This is the same if you're repairing your blaster parts hammer kit. So you can adjust the trigger pressure by shaving a little bit less. And so the more you shave off, the tighter your trigger is going to fit because the further forward it's going to move and uh, then the better it will engage with your sear. So if we open up and you can see what is actually happening in this mechanical section here, 
So what you're going to do is you're going to also trim a little bit just here off of where the, where the trigger rests. So you can see that there's a step. It goes along and down. And what you want to do is trim from the higher part of the step to allow the trigger to go further forwards. And that will positively, much more positively engage the sear, which is the top part here. You can see the shape of the sear block. It'll much better engage this sear block into the hammer. I'm going to just trim a little bit off there. Now, it's about a millimetre you need if you're doing it for the blaster parts kit. I'm taking slightly less because all I'm going to do is just increase the trigger pull by a tiny bit. So if those of you have accidental discharges with your hammer shot, this is how to stop it. So there you go. And what you've effectively allowed now is you've allowed a little bit more forward movement for the trigger. And then when you cock it, it should now engage much better with the sear. When fully cocked, it should just lift up and over. So again, just taking off the moulding lines. On this back edge. Then blow all that surplus out of there, you don't want that cack in there. So now when we pull the hammer back, I'll take the spring off again. So I need to take a bit more off that step. You can see, here's the area where it's interfacing with the trigger. So, shave that back. There's actually a little ramp there in the stock factory moulding to allow for that. And you can see I've cleared a little bit away from here, which just is allowing that trigger to sit fractionally further forward. So now, you can see here the flat face of the, of the hammer is engaged nicely with the sear and it's sitting much more flush here. It's just allowed it to move back. On the blaster parts kit, it does this. So it sits like that. And you can see there that if it's not fully engaged, it then allows that to slip forward. And then it goes off. So you don't want that to happen. So I've just set this up ready to go. I'm not going to worry about that piece. I don't know what it does. I think it might be a spacer, but it doesn't fit over mine. I've put the standard thing back in there. You could put an M3 bolt will fit in there. I've just got a little brass bolt that I found lying around. Um, I think it's M3. Anyway, that will go in if I want it to bond in the middle like that and uh, reinforce that joint. Or you can use the pin like I'm going to do in a bit. I thought I'd try still installing it with no further modifications first just to see if it works because obviously not everyone's going to get involved with that. So this just goes in. I have to say I haven't watched any of Gavin's installation videos on this. So I might not be right. Soon we'll find out. And you can see that that's a nice fit, hopefully, against the foam gasket and it's rotating nicely. So I think that that is probably gonna be good to go. I'm not gonna put any lube in here for a minute because I might have to open it up again. And I'll just put the spring back. I won't put my spacer in just yet because I wanna try it first. So I'm gonna close that up with the other shell half. As you can see, that's a relatively quick mod to do. And we can test the indexing fairly easily. Just pop a couple of screws back in. So I always put one at the pivot, I always think. I'll probably put one, two, three around the cocking mechanism and the hammer. So there you go, that's just held together. So let's see if it ratchets. There you go, nice ratchet. And we've now allowed a little bit more space for the trigger to move in the groove, so we should have a slightly stronger trigger pull. So let's put a dart in there and just see if it shoots. I'll just put a couple of darts in and I'll shoot it off the bench. Now look, you can still rotate this as you can see, to put darts in, which I think is a nice feature. It's not all of them allowing you to do that. So obviously you've removed that ratchet mechanism from inside the um, standard cylinder. So you can still rotate it. So, one, two, three, four, Five. Orange Modworks, take note, that works straight out the box with no further modifications and just literally put in very quickly in five minutes. So I think that's pretty fairly conclusive proof that that works. And you can see that that was with no lubing or any messing around. Um, and one thing I've noticed is that there is, if you hear, 
that's the cylinder catching just a little bit, I think, on the inside here. That's to do with, obviously, the, um, the print lines. And uh, each hammer shot shell will be slightly different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find where that's grinding, and I'll probably just file that off a little bit. I don't think you need to worry too much about chrono results with this because you, you'll get two or three FPS if the dart fit is, is right versus a too loose dart fit. Well done to Gavin for making a working eight shot and obviously well done to Andrew Aitchison for coming up with such an awesome idea and giving the world more shots in their hammer shots.